Hello everyone, welcome to Business School 101. Have you ever wondered how the way you spend your money on food might reveal insights about your country's economic health? This is where the Engel coefficient comes into play, a fascinating economic measure that has the power to paint a picture of both individual household trends and broader societal patterns. So what exactly is the Engel coefficient, and how does it work? What about its implications and limitations? In this video, I will discuss these questions with you. Section 1. The Origin. The Engel coefficient is a concept developed by 19th century German statistician and economist Ernst Engel. It is based on his study of consumption patterns in families with different income levels in Belgium. Engel discovered that as a family's total income increased, the share of their income spent on food decreased. This inverse correlation between food expenditure and income is the foundation of the Engel coefficient which has become an important tool in both economics and sociology for assessing the economic well-being of individuals, households, and even entire countries. Section 2. Calculation. The Engel Index is calculated using the following formula. Engel Index equals food expenditure divided by total expenditure times 100%, where food expenditure is the total amount of money spent by a household on food items over a certain period. Total expenditure is the total amount of money spent by the household on all goods and services over the same period. For example, let's assume a household has the following monthly expenditures, its total monthly household expenditure is $4,000 and its monthly food expenditure, $800. So based on the formula provided above, the Engel coefficient of this household is 800 divided by 400 times 100% equals to 20%. Section 3. Cutoff points. The cutoff points of the Engel coefficient vary globally and have been established by different organizations. According to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, we categorize countries' Engel coefficients into five groups. Group 1. 59% or above. This is considered indicative of absolute poverty. Households in this category spend the majority of their income on food, suggesting that they are struggling to meet their basic needs. Today, very few countries are in this group. Group 2. 50% to 59%. While these households are not in immediate danger of hunger, a significant portion of their budget is still allocated to food expenses. Countries in this group include Nigeria 59%, Kenya 56.7%, Myanmar 56.4%, and Bangladesh 52.7%. Group 3. 40% to 50%. Households here are able to afford food along with other basic necessities and some discretionary items. Countries in this group include Angola 49.6%, Kazakhstan 49.1%, Uzbekistan 46.4%, and Cameroon 45.2%. Group 4. 30% to 40%. Households with this coefficient have more disposable income for non-essential goods and services. Countries in this group include Pakistan. 39.1%, Ghana 38.3%, Philippine 37.9%, and India 32%. Group 5. Below 30%. These households have a high level of disposable income and can spend more on leisure, education, healthcare, and other quality of life improvements. Countries in this group include many developing countries such as Russia 28.9%, China 20.1%, Brazil 16.2%, and all developed countries such as Norway 12.4%, Canada 9.5%, Singapore 7%, United States 6.7%. Please notice that all data given above are based on the report from USDA Economic Research Service 2023. Section 4. Implications. Here are five of the most significant implications of the Engel coefficient. Number 1. Indicator of living standards. The Engel coefficient is often used as a proxy for the standard of living. A lower coefficient typically indicates a higher standard of living. As it suggests that a smaller share of income is needed to cover basic food expenses, allowing for more discretionary spending on other goods and services. Number 2. Reflection of consumer behavior. The Engel coefficient reflects how consumers allocate their spending. As income increases, the proportion of spending on food tends to decrease, while spending on non-essential items such as education, healthcare, and leisure activities tends to increase, indicating a shift in consumer preferences and priorities. Number 3. Economic development and growth. On a macro level, a decreasing Engel coefficient for a country or region can signal economic development and growth. As economies develop and incomes rise, people can afford a more diverse range of goods and services, 
leading to a more balanced and sustainable economic structure. Number 4. Policy Making and Social Welfare The Engel coefficient can inform policy decisions related to social welfare and poverty alleviation. By identifying the proportion of the population with high food expenditure relative to total spending, policymakers can target resources and interventions to those most in need. Number 5. Food Security and Nutrition The Engel coefficient can also be an indicator of food security and nutrition levels within a population. A high coefficient may suggest that households are spending a large portion of their budget on basic food needs, which could be a sign of food insecurity or inadequate access to a diverse and nutritious diet. Section 5. Limitations. While the Engel coefficient is a valuable tool in economics, it also has following limitations. Number 1. Cultural and regional differences. The Engel coefficient does not account for cultural and regional variations in dietary habits and the cost of living. In some cultures, food may be a significant part of the social fabric and thus may be allocated a larger share of the budget regardless of income level. Number 2. Changes over time. The Engel coefficient may not be stable over time as consumption patterns evolve. For example, with advancements in food technology and distribution, people may spend less on food as a proportion of their income due to increased efficiency and lower costs. Number 3. Inflation and purchasing power. Inflation and changes in purchasing power can affect the Engel coefficient. If the price of food increases disproportionately compared to other goods, the coefficient may rise even if the actual standard of living remains the same. Number 4. Non-food expenditures. The Engel coefficient focuses solely on food expenditures and does not consider how money is spent in other areas that are also important for overall well-being, such as healthcare, education, and housing. A household may spend a small proportion of its income on food but a large proportion on other essential items, which could still indicate financial strain or limited discretionary spending. Section 6. Summary. To sum up, the Engel coefficient is an economic indicator representing the percentage of a household's income spent on food. It reflects the observation that as income rises, the proportion spent on food typically falls, suggesting improved living standards. Widely used in economic analysis, it helps assess consumption patterns and living conditions across various income levels. Alright, that's all for today's topic. If you have any questions regarding this video, please leave your thoughts in a comment below. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.